Imagine you're at the starting line of the most important race of your life, but instead of running shoes, you have your keyboard. Instead of a track, you have your computer. And instead of thousands of warring fans cheering for you, you have thousands of lines of code staring right at you. How do you get ready for that race? How do you prepare? How do you become a pro programmer? I mean, it kind of sounds redundant. We have pro and programmer right after each other, right? But ultimately, that's where we want to be. We start off as coders. We start off learning how to code. But how do we get to the next level? What secrets are there? Is there something that we just don't know? I mean, what makes somebody who just goes to the gym on a daily basis but doesn't really achieve their goals of getting the physique they want different from someone who goes to the gym and follows a full program and kind of makes it look easy? I mean, when we first start coding, when we first get into this life, we don't think of ourselves as aspiring amateurs. We're not going to be an amateur grammar. I don't know if that makes sense. But what we want to become is a programmer. Someone who just understands how code works, how to compile code, how to make code achieve a goal, how to solve problems. That's what we're looking to do. And we want to make it as easy and effortless as possible. That's why I think we have to look at this in a different light, a different perspective. We have to think about ourselves as athletes, as performers, just like actors, just like people at the highest level of the corporate ladder, the ones who have to go up on stage and deliver a presentation to thousands of people in the audience and to millions of people watching online. How is it that they prepare? What is it that they do? And how can we implement that in our lives? Well, the first part is easy. It really just starts with you. You have to believe that you can. One of my favorite quotes of all time is that if you believe you can, you can. If you believe you can't, you can't. And the reason why that's so powerful is because everybody starts from square one. Yeah, some people have natural talent. They might get there a little bit faster. But in reality, we all have the capability to achieve this goal. You just have to believe that you can. I know it might be hard. It might be difficult. But it doesn't matter if you're a pro basketball player, if you're a baseball player, if you're a UFC fighter, if you're a boxer, if you're a singer, or whatever it is that you're doing. You got to put in the work. And it all starts with your mind, your thought process, having the ability to focus. And it's hard because we have a million and one things vying for our attention on a daily basis. We have all these images and videos and sounds coming into our brains. And a lot of it's negative. And that can kind of build up. That negativity can build up. And that's why you can often find that some of these elite level people, what they do is they drown out the noise as much as they can. Maybe they turn off social media. They don't watch the news. And they try to just put into their mind some positive thoughts. It's really about the power of visualization. Even before they step foot on that basketball court, even before they go up on that stage, or even before a programmer sits down at their keyboard, at their computer, and starts writing a line of code. They visualize the process, and they make it effortless. Now, I'm not saying that on day one, when you first start learning how to code, if you just visualize it, by next week, you're going to be creating a new Instagram. Even if you're a savant, that's not going to be the case. But if you put in enough time, and you put in enough effort, that's something you really can achieve. Now, I know there's a debate can a single programmer create the next big type project? Now that's going to be a tall order because in reality there's more than one platform that a product needs to be on. It has to be on a computer, right? A laptop, a desktop, it has to be on a tablet, it has to be on a smartphone, but is that an Android phone or an iPhone? Now we have the watches and pretty soon we're going to have all these wearables that can integrate with different types of technologies to provide us information. So yeah, it's a lot. It's a very large undertaking. But typically what you find, especially with a product like Instagram, they started off with something like 11 developers, right? But you have one person or maybe two people ha that have the general idea. They start talking about it, they framework it, they whiteboard it, they figure out what the overall product is going to be in the end game. Then they bring on some additional people, similar mindset, similar goals, and then they work together to try to get the product done. And then you can be like them and sell your product for billions of dollars to Facebook or Meta, or whatever it's called nowadays. But at that point, it starts with your thought process. You learn how to code. You learn how to work with different tools. You visualize the process. You find a way to focus and to drown out all the noise, and you just get to work. The next thing is your training program. Let's talk about an athlete here. Let's talk about Kobe Bryant. 
Kobe Bryant was notorious for his ability to really perform on the court. And we see what he was able to accomplish with that basketball. It was phenomenal. He is definitely one of the greatest of all times. But how did he get there? What is it that he did to get to that level? Was it all talent? The answer is no. He would get up extremely early, sometimes three, four o'clock in the morning. He would go to the basketball court and he would just continue throwing you know, the ball into the hoop. He would be there for hours, just training, dribbling, going down the court. And after a couple of hours of training, his teammates would come onto the court for the real training session. So by the time they got there, he already warmed up for a couple of hours. He put in the work. He put in the effort. And that's the same with us. We can do the same thing. Yeah, I'm not going to be able to slam dunk, right? That's not something that I'm designed for. Yeah, our bodies have physical limits in terms of what they're capable of. I'm not the tallest of guys. I'm not the shortest. I'm an average height. So it's very unlikely that I'm going to be able to dunk the ball. But our brains, with enough effort, with enough time, with enough training, we could develop the skills. We have to put in the hours to really practice our coding skills. And yeah, starting off with one hour is not that bad. It gets us going. But in reality, if you just want to be an amateur programmer, an amateur coder, that's fine. But if you want to be a pro programmer, if you want to get to the next level, you got to put in a little bit more time than one hour. Just like if you want to play basketball in your local court and just have some fun, yeah, one hour would be enough, right? But if you want to become an NBA star, then you got to put in the work. Now I'm five foot nine, right? So some people will say, ah, but you really can't be a basketball player when, five, when you're five foot nine. Well, I think there was someone who was actually shorter, like five foot seven or something, who was able to slam dunk on the court. Now he was younger, he was a lot more athletic than I am, but he put in the work. Fortunately for us, we have all the tools around us. We have all the technology we need. A lot of the information is free. All we have to do ourselves is put in the work. And this is one thing I try to figure out. I debate myself back and forth in terms of what makes sense. Does it make sense to learn one language by itself, fully understand it, fully implement it, really maximize your utilization of a language. Let's say JavaScript or Python or PHP. Just ingrain yourself in it. Or does it make sense for a new coder to learn more than one language? I go back and forth because you can kind of overload your brain if you try to learn too much at the same time. But you could also think about it like this, that if you want to fully understand how PHP or how JavaScript works, you're going to have to understand how HTML works, how CSS works. So I typically fall back to the idea that you want to start the process of mastering one language, but get a general understanding of the rest. It's kind of like the saying, jack of all trades, master of none, but actually the same was jack of all trades, master of one, because you kind of have to get an idea of how everything works together. But then, like I said in another video, you really can't be a master of anything because everything changes. Just when you think you have all this figured out, something's going to change with the framework, with the library, with the core language itself, or with how technology is used. So I like to rephrase it, jack of all trades, mastering one. So you have to really dedicate time to mastering your skills. You have to figure out which language it is you're learning and find time to dedicate to understanding how that syntax of the language works, what is the full potential of that language, what can you create as an end product using that language itself? How does it integrate with other technologies? And even as a solo developer, as a solo programmer, you'd be amazed how far you can get, how much you can get done, how much of a final product you could do because of all the libraries and frameworks that are available out there. It's a lot to learn. You got to put in significant time, but just like an athlete gets ready for their competition, just like a UFC fighter gets ready for their match, they have their general training they do basically all their lives. Regular training. But then they have their boot camps. They have the times that they just dive right in. They're putting in six weeks of like 10, 12 hours a day, making sure they fine tune their skills. And that's how we have to think about it. We start off slow, you know, starting off with an hour a day is not a bad idea, but then you pick it up from there. You start picking up your training. You start really understanding one language. You start understanding how it integrates with other languages. And just like an athlete doesn't just focus on one thing. I mean, Kobe Bryant wasn't just there throwing three-pointers or just trying to slam dunk every single time. That's not the only thing he practiced. That's not the only thing he did. He had his specialties, but beyond practicing on the court, he would also do drills. He would also, you know, do running drills. He would, you know, lift weights. He would do things that would make him better. Overall, try to really develop the full package. He would try to make sure that his physical health and his mental health were at the top level. Because like I said, the first thing is thinking that you can do it. The next thing is actually doing it. You gotta think it, then you gotta do it. 
and you got to tie the two together. And this is the thing, whenever we turn on the game, whenever we turn on the TV or we see some of these amazing feats that they're able to do, they make it look easy. And we're like, how is it that they're able to do it? But what we don't see is the thousands of hours of training they put in to get to that point. So yeah, we're gonna have to work out. We're gonna have to maybe jog a little bit, maybe do some jump rope, maybe do some kettlebell swings. That's one of my favorites. Do some push-ups, pull-ups, and dips. You don't even need a gym membership. Maybe we have to do some meditation or some focus work so we can drown out the noise, get rid of the negativity that tries to enter our brains, and really just focus, dedicate our attention to trying to achieve the goal we want to achieve. And then of course, athletes have to do something else besides just thinking that they can accomplish something, besides just physically training for the game itself or for the competition. There's another aspect of it, and you know what it is. I mean, think about it for a second. Let's say LeBron James, if he's getting ready for a big game, what do you think he's doing? Is he going to be downing a whole bunch of energy drinks, eating a whole big pizza or eating some Cheetos in order to prepare for that game? I mean, we know the answer. It's going to be no. He's going to be having a clean diet. He's going to be having his chefs. I mean, granted, he has a nutritionist. He has people working for him. He has a, a lot of advantages that you and I may not have. But in reality, we can actually do a lot of the same things just with a little bit more effort. And I'm not saying we have to be a monk about this. I'm not saying that we have to go into the mode of just eating completely clean all the time. That's no fun. I'm a big pizza guy. But we have to think about how we feed our bodies, how we feed our brain. Is junk food going to put us in the position where we're able to really think clearly? Are we going to feel good? Or if, you know, if we have some blueberries, which are good for the brain, if we start having some spinach, if we start having some lean meats, if we start having some... Uh, more complex grains instead of the simple carbohydrates. And yeah, coffee, it's a must. I need coffee. I can't survive my day without coffee. But you don't want to get to the point that you're bouncing off the walls. That happens to me sometimes. Sometimes you're not getting enough sleep and you just need that pick-me-up. And coffee tends to do it. But really monitor what you're taking in. Drink a lot of water. The ultimate goal is that we want to feed our brains. I mean, you got to think about it. If we want to be more energized, if we want to be more cognitively alert, if we want to enhance our cognition, if we want to be able to enhance our problem-solving skills, we got to feed our bodies properly. We got to prime our bodies. And because you got to think about it, it's like a car, right? If you're going to be watching NASCAR, if you're going to be watching Daytona 500, if you're going to be watching the 24 Hours of Le Mans, that's coming up soon. What are you putting into that car? Are you putting in just regular gas? Are you putting in just regular, you know, tools? Are you just using regular parts? Are you trying to put in the best possible ingredients you can in order to optimize the performance of that car? Especially if you're going for 24 hours. Yeah, so what you eat and drink, it matters. It makes a difference. And now this next part is something that I harp on all the time. Sleep. Sleep and I, we don't necessarily have the best relationship in terms of getting adequate sleep or getting enough sleep. I, you know, try to figure out how I can try to get at least six, seven hours a night. You know, it doesn't always happen. I have to admit that I can really improve on how many hours a night I get to sleep. But there is a direct correlation with your ability to focus and your ability to stay motivated and your ability to process information with more sleep that you get. If you get less than six hours, you're not going to function that well. If you get eight hours, nine hours, you're going to function better. I mean, it's during the nighttime, it's during the sleep time that your brain processes everything that you went through throughout the day. It's the recovery phase. So you have a couple of aspects to it. You have your recovery in terms of your physical body. Sleep is important for that, but also important for your mental acuity. So yeah, it's something I'm working on, something that we all need to work on, especially nowadays. It seems like we're going to bed later and we're getting up earlier or however our schedules are. It seems like sleep is something we don't have enough time for. And yeah, I know it's about getting the job done. It doesn't matter if you get two hours a night of sleep or five hours or 10 hours. If the work's got to get done, it's got to get done. And that's going to happen. There's going to be nights that you don't sleep that much. But if you allow that to accumulate in terms of one day sleeping for four hours, the next day just five, then three, then five, then six. You're not getting enough time. And that's going to have a cumulative effect in terms of how you process information and your, or your inability to process information. So I think it's something that you and I can both work on. Let's get more sleep. Easier said than done, but it's something we have to do. Now this next part is really important. And I think it's probably one of the most important things that we have to focus on. Yes, we need to think positively. Yes, we have to get enough sleep. Yes, we have to train. We have to be physically capable of doing our job. I mean, what does that mean for us programmers? We have to work out our fingers, right? No, we got to do more than that. We got to be 
physically able to just sit there for marathon sessions without letting our bodies waste away. Kind of sounds easy, you're sitting down, but sitting down causes a toll on you. And that goes back to being physically active. But the next part, it kind of ties into where I started off in this video, where we're talking about the mental side, the mindset, the believing that you can. And this part is about the motivation and recovery. We live in a world that feeds us negativity. Whenever you turn on the TV, it seems like some news outlet is talking about a war over here, a climate change is taking place, and you know, something bad is happening. And like I said, that can take a toll on you. So we kind of have to feed ourselves some motivation, and that's why if you look back at some of the videos I've done, probably done about 20 of these motivational type videos, take a look at them, it's about two minutes each, or maybe three minutes in terms of the length. But they're just quick videos that try to really jumpstart your motivation. And I know, people say motivation doesn't work. You get motivated one day, by the second day, you might have a little bit of motivation left over, but by the end of the week, you're done. Well, it's like taking a shower. You gotta do that every day, right? So it's the same with motivation. You gotta practice getting motivated. You gotta get yourself into that mindset. You gotta develop some affirmations for yourself. And the reason for this is because if you are unmotivated, it's kind of hard to get started. Now, over the years, I've been looking into something called Stoicism and reading the book Meditations by Marcus Aurelius and trying to get an understanding of how you can take control of not only your mind, but implement the strength and power of your mind into your reality. And what that means is that no matter what's taking place, no matter where you are at that point in time, something's got to get done, you get it done, even if you're unmotivated. But let's face it, if you are motivated, it's a little bit easier. And then this final part is that we have to think about the long-term commitment. I mean, think about it. Some of these athletes, some of these performers, some of these you know, top-level executives, they've been practicing for this their entire lives. They put in years of practice, of experimenting, of research, of implementing different strategies. It really is a long-term commitment. I mean, at the pinnacle of, you know, some of these sports is the Olympics, right? You see the Olympics, you see the absolute best gymnasts, you see the absolute best wrestlers, and you see them perform at their absolute best. They make it look easy. But again, we don't see the thousands of hours they put in to get to that point. Tying in everything together, the mindset, very important. The ability to physically train, not only on the sport or event they're getting ready for, but also all around it in terms of getting physically fit, getting, making sure they have the cardio, making sure they have the physical strength, making sure they have the durability, agility, and flexibility, and then making sure they tie it in with their diet, making sure they're eating the right foods, drinking the right fluids. And then while it may be hard, making sure they get quality sleep. And all this time, staying motivated, not letting the negativity of the world overconsume them. And they know it's the long game. So if you wanna to get to that level to be a pro, programmer. You have to put in the effort every single day and you have to make it count. You have to be very structured. You have to be disciplined. You have to be focused. And it's like they say, how do you win a marathon or how do you finish a marathon? Because even if you don't win it, just finishing a marathon is winning in itself because not many people can do that. It takes one step at a time, one foot before the other. How do you build the most miraculous buildings? or the biggest and best structures, one brick at a time? And how do you create the absolute best program? One line of code at a time. And then years and years and years of doing this. All right, so I wanna challenge you. I wanna challenge you to really think of yourself as an athlete. Even if you're sitting there for the vast majority of your day in front of a computer, typing away, putting in the, the hours to make sure you can create a program, or just trying to learn how to code, learn how to program. You're a mental athlete. You wanna go from being a coder to being a programmer. It takes a lot of hard work, it takes a lot of discipline, it takes a lot of effort, and again, it's about the mindset, it's about your physical capability, it's about your diet and exercise, it's about your sleep quality, it's about your motivation, and it's about understanding it takes time. But I believe you can do it. So I encourage you and I challenge you, make it happen. And one last thing, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, don't forget to subscribe, hit that notification icon, and I will see you in the next video. Happy Cody.